Welcome to the Lone Star GNCC, round number one of America Series, the 2005 Suzuki Grand National Cross Country Championship Series. Today, ATVs tackling the hills of Texas. Our players, five-time and current ATV champion Bill Balance aboard the number one Yamaha. The number two Suzuki of William Yokely, who ended the season last year at the Ironman with a big win and winning three out of the last four races on a Honda, the number three of Chris Forge. All three big players in today's race. Let's head down to the starting line now and see who's gonna come out on top. Well, it looks like the number seven is poised and ready to go. That's Chris Jinks, the number six of Brian Cook, the number four of Matt Smiley, the number three, Chris Borch, number two, Suzuki rider, William Yokely, and, of course, our number one, Yamaha rider, Bill Balance, a five-time Grand National Cross Country champion, also the defending champion, as we're ready to go with the Lone Star GNCC, and it looks like Yokely going to grab the early lead. No, Balance going to come by and steal it right away. As we head into turn number two, it's Balance, Yokely, and a whole slew of other riders as they jockey for position. Also, we see uh, Cook there swinging wide on the outside on board the number six as we head through that first wood section. It is Balance out front, followed by Yokely. Then the number seven of Jinx in fourth board. Fifth, that looks like true. It may be six. That could be the number six of Brian Cook to open it up. And uh-oh, on the starting line, Matt Smiley has stalled it out. The rest of our riders are out in the woods already. He's got a long road to hoe to catch up, especially to that number one position of Bill Balance. And speaking of Bill Balance, we had an opportunity to talk to him this morning before the race. It's been good to get five championships, but uh, I've still got a hunger to go out and get some more, you know, so uh, and we'll take this Yamaha out and this new Yamaha ride that I've got and all the support and try to go out here and win a few more races than I did last year. That's the plans and uh, I think it's very possible as long as we stay healthy and have a good little good luck. And it's good to see that uh, Factory Yamaha is supporting the GNCCs now with Bill Balance and also his brother Brandon. Also, we've got factory support with Suzuki and William Yokely. Factory support also with uh, Matt Smiley, who started out on the starting line aboard the number four. He's a Polaris rider riding on a Predator. We're now near the uh, Checkpoint 1 region and uh, some of our riders checking in. This may also be some of our Pro-Am riders inching their way toward the back of the pack of our pro riders as they work their way uh, through the wooded sections. And that was Smiley, I believe, just sneaking by there in our opening lap of GNCC Racing. So uh, he's got his work cut out for him. Still a long way back. And uh-oh, one of our pro-am riders way out of shape there. Hit a big bump on that hill coming up to the uh, checkpoint. And uh, our other riders having to slow down quite a bit just to get around, but uh, they're keeping their momentum up. That might be the 301 stalled out there. That'd be Sean Hess, a local Texas rider and an Oklahoma and Texas cross-country champion, a state champion at that, and trying his luck here against the pros in the GNCC division. Speaking of pros, there's the number one guy right there, first place, Bill Balance, already beginning to open up what looks like a healthy lead. Second place, William Yokely. Third place, Chris Jinks aboard the number seven, Porch in fourth aboard the number four, and fifth it's Brian Cook aboard the number six machine. A little uh, change in positions there. Santo Derisi also working his way up to the front of the pack. It looks like he could be a force to be reckoned with here in the uh, early part of 05. Didn't have a strong 04 season, but he made some changes, and I think those changes may suit him well as we check the leaders there. Balance, Yokely, Jinx, and Borge. One, two, three, and four through that uh, mud section, and doesn't look like the mud's slowing them down much, and as we uh, near the completion of lap number one, that is the completion of lap number one, balance out front in second, still Yokely, and I believe that may still be the number seven of Jinx running in the number three spot, and it is, Borch back in the number four spot, as we uh, check our leaderboard once again, balance, Yokely, Jinx, Borch, and Derisi rounds out that first lap in fifth place. Finish line region now, still the end of lap number one. There's your fifth place ride, the number 16 of Santo Derisi. Derisi is actually running about 19 seconds down from the front four in sixth place. There's the number six of Brian Cook checking in now. And the seventh place spot, that's the 14 of Andrus Lagson. Eighth place, the number nine of Brandon Balance. Ninth place, that's the 23 of Brian Baker. And rounding out your top 10, the 69 of Tom Barrett. And there's Matt Smiley at the end of lap number one. He's back in 11th place. He's got some major ground to make up there to catch up to our front three for a possible podium finish. And speaking of our front three, there's Yokely. And now being followed by Borch. Borch has made the pass into third. I thought last year coming into Texas here, I'd have been a little better, but uh, now I feel a lot more confident testing and developing on that new Honda. So pretty, pretty pumped about it. 
and Chris took care of a lot of that testing and development on that new Honda late last year at the end part of the 2004 GNCC series and of course he took three wins of his last four nationals that he raced in and uh, ending the season on a high note and obviously coming in to Texas this year on another high note and uh, already into the number three spot as he's made the pass on Chris Jinx. Jinx back and forth. Now we're looking at uh, Pit Row, lap number two, the beginning section of that lap and uh, no riders scheduled I'm sure for a pit stop at this point as uh, we're now in our Pro-Am class making their way through and uh, must have uh, spoken a little too soon there as one of our Pro-Am riders is checking in for a pit stop. That looks like a glove problem. Could be de uh, blisters developing uh, early on in this race and that could create some problems for that rider. Maybe just some wet gloves. Hopefully he can get that problem rectified. Back out front there comes balance uh, down through that wooded section. They call suicide slide. Does doesn't look nearly as uh, tough uh, on the camera as what uh, the terrain actually really throws at you. Jinx again falling back and forth as Chris Borch has captured and solidified. It looks like that number three spot. We see Jinx making his way around the turn now and uh, still trying to play uh, catch up with our front three riders now, but he's got them well in sight. And once we get into some of those tight wood sections, we can see this uh, race for third place tighten back up once again. There's the Reese keeping a pretty good pace as well. Into Chaos Canyon now, our leaders Balance and Yokely still running one and two. Again, Borch back in third. We had an opportunity to talk with uh, Yokely earlier this morning. And so I was real happy with the way the 2004 season rounded up. Uh, the Suzuki's just doing awesome. It's still holding up great in every race. Uh, all my sponsors are really back and strong, just like always. And uh, looking forward to the 2005 series. Uh, won this race last year. I'm going to go out today and play it smart. And I think it's going to be a good day and a good year. And a couple of keynotes for William Yunkley is the fact not only did he win the race here last year, but he also wrapped up the 04 season with a win at the Ironman. So he was the man with the bragging rights throughout the entire offseason, and he opens up here in Texas, and uh, he's right behind the leader in a possible win situation. Of course, still about... Uh, uh, three more laps or so to go in this race before we'll know the true winner. Brian Cook, your sixth place rider, gets hung up here in Chaos Canyon and he loses a position to Anders Langson's number 14 machine and that drops him to seventh. Now eighth place as Brandon Ballas, the number nine, also gets by. A tough break for Cook, the number six machine, stuck here in Chaos Canyon in an area from at least this camera angle. Doesn't look like all that rough of a situation, but folks, that's why they call it Chaos Canyon because it creates just that chaos for our riders trying to make their way up the hill. One rider not having much problem. That's Brian Baker aboard the number 23. He'll gain a spot there and smiling now in the top 10. I had some ups and downs and I'm um, just going to try and build off that and come out here strong and you know just, just try and get on that podium every race and hopefully having a successful season. Looking for a successful season indeed out of Matt Smiley as he is one of the more consistent riders over the last couple of years of racing, scoring probably as many or if not more podiums than most riders except for maybe our champion, Bill Balance. We've seen Needlinger go by there, the number 101. He's a Pro-Am rider from Flagtown, New Jersey. Now here comes Rhett Butler, also a Pro-Am rider from Oak Grove, Missouri. And the 965 of Michael Burroughs out of Gilman City, Missouri, also checking in right behind him through Chaos Canyon. Checking a little further back, this looks like the number 18 of uh, Pro rider Johnny Gallagher out of Aurora, Ohio. A little bit far back in the pack. I'm sure a little further back than what he wants to be. Other riders checking in. There's the 66 of Adam McGill, Pro-Am rider out of uh, West Union, West Virginia. Also looking for Pro-Am rider number 27 there. That is uh, Greg Stewart from London, Kentucky making his way up and through Chaos Canyon. And uh, as we look, uh, here comes uh, another predator. No, this is not Matt Smiley, but uh, look for more of these predators from Polaris out on the race course as we see this one easily ma manipulating that uh, Chaos Canyon section there. More riders checking in, and this one is the number 61 of Jeff Miller, a pro-am rider from Smithfield, Pennsylvania, actually the hometown of seven-time ATV champion. And, of course, that was none other than uh, Barry Hawk. Also checking in with us as we make our way up the hillside here. Looks like I uh, can't hardly make that number out, but right behind him, I believe this is going to be the uh, number 29 of Josh Ribley, one of our pro-am riders from Martinsville, Indiana, right there, as we see him making his way up through Chaos Canyon. Very chaotic. Checking back through now more of our classes 
as uh, Chaos Canyon becoming more and more deceiving. As you can see, the, the dirt is being turned up. There's the 42 of uh, Frank Kendall, a pro-am rider from Williamstown, West Virginia. Many other riders right behind him. A lot of these pro-am riders uh, just kind of picking and choosing lines of the riders right ahead of them, realizing that this Chaos Canyon was going to be rather tricky. And not so many have made that same mistake as Brian Baker, the number six machine from the pro class, and getting stuck on the hill, at least in this uh, pro-am division anyway, as uh, they make their way up. Now, as we get back further into some of our uh, B and other A classes, we can possibly expect to see more riders getting uh, stuck here in Chaos Canyon. Looks like still more of our Pro-Am riders checking in. Tough to get some of those number plates. And <laughs> there's another rider making nearly the same mistake, but uh, the momentum will carry him up and over and through that tough section of the race course there. Can't get a number on that rider, but uh, a big break for him as he had the momentum definitely on his side. Looks like the 113 checking in there. That is George Long the fourth, a Pro-Am rider from Philippi, West Virginia. Hot on the trail of some of the other Pro-Am riders there. As you can see, our classes are starting to stretch out quite a bit. And this is only a small indication here at Chaos Canyon of what this uh, tough Texas terrain is like. And, of course, uh, if you see the riders getting stuck here and being held up, you can bet your bottom dollar that they're getting held up in other places also. Four-stroke A riders now beginning their check-in as we see the 77 of Mark Marshall from Graysville, Ohio, checking in on Chaos Canyon and other four-stroke A riders now making their way up and through Chaos Canyon as well. And you know, Chaos Canyon is not, as we said, uh, the only tough spot in these trails that we have here at the uh, Barnwell Mountain Recreational Area for the Lone Star GNCC. Some other places, uh, I'm sure, developing throughout the entire 11-mile course and a tip of the hat going to uh, Dick Burleson, an eight-time national enduro champion, and also Gary Hazel from Thumper Racing for helping design this particular race course, 11 miles of it. And, of course, uh, most of the time throughout the uh, entire GNCC series, a 1991 national enduro champion and trail boss here at the GNCC's Jeff Russell normally designs the race course, but uh, he is very thankful to those two for helping uh, make sure that this course gets designed here in Texas. And, of course, as we check in with more of our riders, we see it uh, looks like the number 50 of John Rowling, another four-stroke A rider, making his way up through. He is from LaGrange, Kentucky. Well, we spoke too soon, as it looks like Rowling is no longer rolling. He is kind of stuck there on the rock at uh, near the top of Chaos Canyon. He'll back up a little bit. That's where reverse can definitely come in handy. Not sure if that machine's got it, but uh, obviously electric start helped him out. He loses at least one position there. The 71 there of Mark Notman out of the four-stroke A class in Hubbard, Ohio, now making his way up through Chaos Canyon as well. Another rider working on Chaos Canyon. This looks like an open A rider from Rocky Mountain, Virginia, the number 712 of C. Scott Mills, making his way by there just a moment ago. Also the 88 of Chris Conklin, a four-stroke A rider from New Martinsville, Indiana, working on Chaos Canyon. Well, we've seen some of our open A riders, our four-stroke A riders, looking now for also some of our vet and junior class riders to be making their way in the picture here pretty soon in Chaos Canyon. And uh, again, you can see that the uh, crowd is really starting to gather here in Chaos Canyon. And as you can see, a lot of the spectators like to join in and help out a little bit with the activities. There's the 124, Steve Zappi, a vet class rider out of Millhausen, Indiana. Uh, mastering Chaos Canyon. Well, we thought he was mastering Chaos Canyon. I believe that maybe he got stuck there for just a moment. Also, the 913 of Justin Brown, junior class rider from Youngstown, Ohio. That actually stuck. Might have been the 95 of Anthony Hill, an open A rider from Vincent, Ohio. And I believe that's exactly who that was. 
and uh, the 124 of Zappi actually made his way up the hill unscathed the best that we could tell there. Here's the number 70 making his way up through. This is Peter Stadmuller, also a junior class rider. He's out of Erie, Pennsylvania, working his way up through. Also the number 79 of Ryan Shockling. He's an open A rider out of Zanesville, Ohio. Cheers from some spectators going out for the number 58. And that, of course, Justin Buss, a junior class rider from Wheatland, Indiana. There's the number 31 of Dave Simmons, a senior class rider from Painesville, Ohio. The 727 also mastering Chaos Canyon is Wayne Seegers, a vet class rider from Woodruff, South Carolina. And also hot on the gas in Chaos Canyon, at number 62 of Marty Eckert, also a vet class rider, all the way from Louisville, Kentucky. Well, as we can tell, more and more of our vet and senior class riders are checking in, so we're on the back one-third of the uh, starts and uh, nearing the end of those riders that are uh, working their way up through the canyon. And, of course, we'll be heading back to our leaders here in just a few moments. But, uh-oh, uh stuck on the hill, Barry Taylor, speaking of senior class riders, Barry Taylor, the number 222 from Fairland, Indiana, stuck on the side of the hill, and uh, that is forcing some other riders to choose different lines, it looks like, and causing what we call chaos here in uh, Chaos Canyon. Being stuck anywhere on a race course is going to cause you some problems, and if you're one of those riders that gets stuck in a single line, you're going to cause several folks a lot of problems, and uh, with this being this way at Chaos Canyon, I believe as the laps develop, we'll see more and more lines start to open up here in Chaos Canyon as well. Traffic jam in Chaos Canyon. Now you see why they call it Chaos Canyon, because it can create some chaos for a lot of our riders, and a lot of those riders we can see stuck trying to find an alternate line, one that might take them up and around that stuck rider there just a few moments ago, but nothing doing as these riders uh, have held themselves up, going to have to uh, work their way out of that, and another rider going to have to work his way out of the banners. Look at that. He got into the uh, repeater banner there, and not only did he get into that, but he ripped it completely in two, and it looks like it's wrapping up around his rear axle, and that could cause some problems for him. Hopefully not a lot of that is there and uh, not going to cause him too many problems, but definitely going to be something he doesn't want to keep throughout the entire race. So in a pit stop, might work on getting that out because it could cause him more problems as this race does develop. And as you can see, still carnage, if you will, on the side of the hill here at Chaos Canyon and riders beginning to open up lines around the outside there. And again, we expected to see that to start happening. Uh-oh, problems for this Yamaha rider. We see some steam coming out of that machine. That doesn't look too promising, but uh, he gets it fired back up a few moments later, it looks like, and is working his way up and out of the canyon now as uh, our Suzuki pilot finally working his way up and out of the canyon now as well.
and one rider having some problems nearly overturning the ATV there, but uh, able to regain composure, fire it back up, get back into the race. And not only does he get back into the race, but he also gets into some more trouble almost immediately following. Gets into that same rock section that uh, John Rowling had problems with there a few moments ago. Gets some help, though, from a spectator, pushes him back a little bit, and then he gets back into the race and uh, doesn't hold things up too long. Here's a rider that's holding things up, not too many other people, but uh, holding the front end of that quad up without uh, much problem. Looks like uh, he has tried to uh, maneuver himself over a uh, rather large rock there, as uh, a lot of riders have uh, in this uh, first lap through, lap number two at our Lone Star GNCC here in Chaos Canyon, and uh, more uh, fans coming down to help him work his way off that rock and on his way through Chaos Canyon. Speaking of on his way, the 136 there, Fred Mudd from the junior class out of LaGrange, Kentucky, is on his way up and through Chaos Canyon. Here comes your champion, Bill Balance, the number one, continuing to lead here on lap number two, but big changes in the number two spot as Borich has taken over the number two spot, and the number two of William Yokely has dropped off to third on that Suzuki. Wow, what a change there. It looks like that Borich is on a tear. There's Jinx, and wow, Jinx has stalled out coming around that turn and down that hill. He'll fire it back up. Not a lot of time being lost there, but some is being lost. Brandon Balance now working his way through. It looks like he may have taken over the number five spot now as big changes. There's Lagston's the number 14 machine, running sixth as he has also gained a couple of spots. And Santo Derisi has dropped all the way back to seventh after running fifth. He finished sixth overall here in the 04 season, hoping for that or maybe even a better finish. He's got his work cut out for him if he wants to do that. And it looks like Borch is closing that gap quite a bit on that number one of Bill Balance as uh, they make their way through some of the more open terrain here at the Barnwell Mountain Recreational Area and of course the Lone Star GNCC. Yokely looks like he's losing a little bit of time there and Jinx being held up by some lap traffic but he's going to get on by. Santo Derisi, looks like uh, Derisi has somehow or another in the last couple of miles regained two more spots, so Derisi is back up to fifth. That'll put uh, Balance in at least six. That's Brandon Balance, and Lagsden's back into the number seven spot, so big changes there. Some of those tight wood sections could probably be uh, the cause of the big changes we have there. There's Yokely once again swinging around. Looks like more time is being lost. He's trying to, to gain as much ground as possible. Here comes Jinx still holding on to the number four spot. A very respectable position for him. He opened up in uh, lap number one when uh, carried it all the way through lap number one in the number three spot. Looks like Lagsden has gotten back around the number 16 of Derisi. So Derisi and Lagsden are battling back and forth, back and forth for that uh, fifth place position right now. A top five ride and uh, the top five positions right now seem to be the hot spots and you seem to be in the hot seat if you're in one of those spots as uh, you got a big bullseye on your back and things are uh, changing. Matt Smiley also working his way up through the pack there as uh, we check back a little further. That might be up to an eighth place position now for Smiley and if that's the case he is on the move and in the hunt at this point for a possible top five finish, which I'm sure he would love to salvage after stalling it out on the start. This particular section of the race course here is uh, about the 10 and a half mile marker as we're nearing the end of our uh, lap and uh, more tight wood sections and back into the pits, Santo Derisi actually checking back a little further for him and that was near the end of the lap as end of lap number two, that is Bill Balance and Chris Borch running wheel to wheel at the end of that second lap, big changes from lap number one. And as we go to our leaderboard, it's Bill Balance leading Chris Forch in second and third, Yokely fourth, Jinx, and Santo Derisi hangs on to a top five spot at the end of two. You know, whether you're riding in your own backyard 
or riding on a Grand National Cross Country Championship Trail, you're going to encounter some really tricky situations sometimes. And some of the tricky situations would be a rocky uphill. And we're with Bill Balance for the Yamaha Rider Tip of the Week. And Bill, I tell you, we went down to Chaos Canyon, and it's a rocky uphill, a little bit challenging. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly down there. You know, it's not even, uh, it's hard for the people at home on TV to get justice of how bad this hill is, but it's got a lot of rocks in it. And, you know, as I start up the bottom, I'm trying to find the best lines up through, through there that I can keep my momentum up. I'm looking for uh, some rocks that's stable, that's not too loose, so that I lose so much wheel spin and it just kills my momentum. And we're having to swap back and forth a lot on that hill because there's better lines on the left side or the right side. And it's the ways that you can keep your momentum up to get through, you know, up to the top of the hill without getting hung up. So it's, uh, it's important to keep your eyes open and uh, look for the best places to get your best traction. Well, both momentum and traction are on the side of Bill Balance as he leads at the end of lap two, heading into lap number three. There's your third place ride, the number two of William Yokely checking in at the end of two for him as our rider should be heading into the pits now. And we'll check in. And look at this. Borch has taken over the number one spot. We know he's going to be fast. You know he's going to be there at the end of the race. Uh, we are really setting ourselves up for the last lap. Uh, we brought him in the same lap on, with Chris, uh, fueled him up, put two and a half gallons of fuel in, uh, sent him back out. He's right behind Chris right now. Uh, we can look for a real real good finish at the end of the race. What's going on in Balance's pits? What's going on in Yokely's? Yeah, we don't have any, don't have any idea. Just gotta wait until he gets here and try to work it out the best we can. That's about all we can do. Well, they'll work it out the best they can for sure as uh, strategies of pitting are probably uh, at this point very crucial for our top riders. We see there in the pits also the number nine, the brand of balance. He's getting a little fuel and looks like maybe working on something else there attached to his chest protector. That is obviously part of his drink system there, the mouthpiece of his drink system either being replaced or cleaned out. He's filled up with gas and looks like he's got uh, also plenty of water and uh, something to drink it out of clean. That's the important thing, trying to keep that clean out there. Here's uh, Smiley into the pits now, aboard the number four Polaris machine, and uh, he has got his work cut out for him, but a quick pit stop. Not a lot of gas, but probably just enough of a splash to take him on home. In the pits also, one of our Pro-Am riders, that's the number 61 of Jeff Miller, and look there beside Miller, that is a seven-time ATV champion and one-time motorcycle champion, Barry Hawk, who is uh, looking over the situation, and it looks like Miller going to get off the machine. It looks like a flat tire as the tire is being removed, and a new one is being placed back on the number 61 Yamaha. Tough break for him. Going to lose valuable seconds and a lot of time. Yeah, a little rock. Yeah, they're sharp. you got to watch the edges. They're real sharp. They'll get you. It's fast. It's a nice track, though. You get back in here? Oh, yeah, we're getting back in it. Time for top five. Getting back into it with a little help from Barry Hawk himself. You see him on the screw gun there as he is tightening down the lugs. And Miller is about set to go. Look at that. Miller is set to go. And a very quick, almost NASCAR-ish pit stop there for the number 61 of Jeff Miller and uh, Barry Hawk helping him out. Uh, that's got to give you a lot of confidence in your race day. Here's your leaders once again. As we told you, Borch is taking over the lead. Balance running in the number two spot. And it looks like Balance is not liking that number two position as he is attacking Chaos Canyon. Yokely stuck in Chaos Canyon. Look at that, a rather simple section of the course. And he gets hung up. And uh, he gets hung up not only once, but twice, stalls it out, refires it, and right back into the race you see him. He is disgusted, shaking his head, realizing that uh, every second counts here at the GNCCs. Chris Jinks holding on to the number four spot as he works his way through and attacks Chaos Canyon now. And looking a little further back now, it is uh, more riders checking in. That is uh, the 127. I believe that's one of our vet class riders. Is he is also having problems making his way up through Chaos Canyon. If you notice, riders, even our top riders, having a little more trouble the second time through Chaos Canyon here on lap number three. There's Brian Baker from Missouri. Uh, he's not having much of a problem there. And uh, he uh, manipulates uh, Chaos Canyon A-OK. -okay. It looks like uh, Baker is running a really strong race. The number nine of Brandon Balance also, uh, we saw him in the pits there just a few moments ago. A little extended pit stop for him, but uh, back on the gas he goes and he makes his way to the top of Chaos Canyon without much problem. 
And more riders having problems in near that uh, same area of the racetrack where uh, Yokely was actually having problems a few moments ago. Obviously, from this camera angle, we can't see the holes and the ruts that are starting to develop there, and neither can we see those rocks that are sticking out and actually holding the riders up. But uh, a lot of that dirt is being dug out from around those rocks after that uh, first lap of racing here on lap number two now of Chaos Canyon in lap number three. Uh, they're starting to be more and more exposed, causing more and more problems. We saw the number 11 there, Michael Houston. He checked in with us there just a few moments ago. He is from the uh, pro class and uh, also uh, looking for more riders to uh, check in. It looks like this one here is the uh, nope, I couldn't catch the number on that one, but uh, we got a rider hung up again on the rocks as they're trying to find any line that they can to make their way up. And you know at this point in the race, you're about uh, three laps into it, an hour and 15 or 20 minutes into the race, you know these riders are starting to uh, suffer from attrition. The uh, wear and tear on their bodies and their machines is starting to take its toll, and Chaos Canyon is really, really beating them up pretty bad. Looks like the number 92 of Craig Wilson, an open B rider now making his way and mastering Chaos Canyon as he gets up through and looks like uh, going to make it out A-OK. -okay. Other riders checking in now. We'll try to check in with some of the uh, numbers there. There's the number 913. That's Justin Brown. He's a junior class rider from uh, Youngstown, Ohio. Also, uh, the 124, Steve Zapfe from the VET class will check in with us as well. The 111, that's Cliff King. He is an open A rider all the way from Central City, Kentucky, as he masters Chaos Canyon his second time up through as well. There's the number 50 of Rolling. Uh, we actually saw Rolling get stuck right about there last time around, but uh, he holds on to it and uh, will make it to the top of the hill this time. I guess a lesson learned from the uh, first lap around through Chaos Canyon. There's the 66 of Adam McGill, one of our top five uh, pro-am riders. Uh, also, Brian Cook checking in with us aboard the number six. He's one of our pro riders having problems on Chaos Canyon. His first time through there on lap number two just one lap ago. Also, other riders checking in. Looks like, uh, looks like we may have the number 42 there making his way up now. That's Frank Kendall once again, a uh, Pro-Am top five rider as well as he uh, is followed by the 61 of Jeff Miller, the rider was, that was being helped by Barry Hawk in the pits only just a few moments ago, a mile, a mile and a half back. He uh, got that flat tire fixed. I'm sure that's helping him out quite a bit as he attacks Chaos Canyon now and works his way up through and to the top. Oh, to hill. One rider gets a little out of sync and uh, causes a chain reaction, it appears, with uh, other riders as they fight to make their way up through Chaos Canyon. There's another section of the racetrack that has changed so much. That inside line that seemed to be the fast and easy line in the early part of the race is becoming, uh, well, the shortest line, but uh, has obviously become the roughest line. There's the number 50, 251, rather, of Ryan Morphew. He's an open A rider all the way from Cookville, Tennessee, as he also makes his way up through uh, Chaos Canyon. Let's check back in with our leaders out front now, and Borich continues to hold on to the number one spot, and you could almost say this is a virtual wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle as these riders only have a couple of bike links separating them in those uh, wooded sections, and this race is going to continue to tighten up unless Borich can find some way to stretch things out. A few seconds back in the number three spot, that's still Yokely aboard the number two machine as he may, whoa, what's going on here? Lap traffic stopped dead in the middle of the roadway and Yokely's going to have to back down and back off the hill and not only that 
maneuver his way off the race course for just a moment, back up a little bit and try to get a little bit of a run for this section of the course. And uh, that's going to cost uh, Yokely some more valuable time. There's Santo Derisi as we check back to the number five spot. That number 16 rider still hot on the gas. And your fourth place right there, the number seven of Chris Jinks. He makes his way by that uh, lap traffic uh, a little easier than what Yokely did. So he's actually closed up that gap a little bit on Yokely. There's Derisi also getting by the lap rider, the, uh, I guess, stalled lap rider, if you will. And uh, that could uh, cause problems for riders if a bunch of them came through at once. But if they come through uh, virtually one at, at a time, they can get around without uh, many problems. There's Borch and Balance once again as uh, things open up. And a little more open field section, if you will, and a little more speed for these riders as Balance is going to try to close that gap and maybe try to set Borich up for a pass here. But it's going to be tough to do, especially with the momentum and the speed now that Borich has. Back through into the woods now and into a mud hole section. Slow going, and Borich, that number three machine, uh, continues to uh, slice and dice his way not only through the track but now through lap traffic as things are becoming a little more sticky out there. Our leaderboard is Borch out front, Balance in second, Yokely in third, Derisi fourth, and Chris Jinks has dropped off the fifth. Picking things up at the end of lap three, now the beginning of lap number four, Borch continues to lead Balance and it's still a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle. We made his switch late last year and turned it around and got really going good and he trained hard and he's really working hard at this now. Well, Borch obviously working hard as we said at the end of the last year. He made that switch about midway through the 2004 season to the Honda and has uh, obviously adapted to it very, very well and is a very strong rider and is going to be uh, probably one of the toughest competitors that Bill Balance is going to be facing to try and defend that number one title here in the 05 season. Yokely still several seconds down as we made mention a few moments ago. Derisi has made the pass and has actually worked his way into the fourth place position. Jinx has now dropped off to the number five spot as our top five is changing a little bit. Uh, same five riders for the most part, but they are switching up their position somewhat. Yokely though, holding steadily back in that number three spot. Well, there goes Jinx. He's uh, in the hunt for Derisi's number four right now, as that used to belong to him. We'll check back in with those guys in a little bit. Right now, back up front in Chaos Canyon. Once again, it is Borch and Balance attacking the canyon with uh, little or no problems. And uh, they make their way up and through and to the top of the hill with uh, virtually uh, no problems. It's just a matter of uh, what Balance was saying in a pro tip a lap ago, momentum and traction. And that's what both Borch and Balance were able to achieve their third time through here on lap number four at Chaos Canyon. There's the number seven of Chris Jinks once again. He stalled out and more valuable time being lost by the fifth place rider there as he is holding up uh, not only himself but some uh, lap traffic. Now the lappers are thinking, hey, yo, wait a minute, buddy. You just passed us down the uh, trail just a little while ago. What are you doing holding us up on this section? So they're going to move on around and uh, Jinx is going to try to move off the track. He can't get that machine fired back up. This is where uh, an electric start would definitely pay off. There's the number 18, it looked like, of Johnny Gallagher uh, making his way through. That very well could be him a lap down at that point. I uh, don't think he was a strong factor in the top 10 in the last couple of laps, but uh, we'll check in with that, and if uh, that is the case, we'll definitely update you on that before the race is in. Meanwhile, Baker still hung up, gets it fired back up, and you know, uh, actually, that's not Baker, that's Chris Jinks. That's the same place that Baker had problems, though, uh, a couple of laps ago. And uh, there's Balance, and Balance is also having problems of his own as uh, lap traffic is becoming a factor for him. And uh, now the lap rider is off trying to help Balance. That's, uh, that's camaraderie, and that's a good sportsmanship right there. Lap rider uh, actually holding up one of our pro riders will get off the machine and try to help the uh, pro rider up and around him to uh, ensure that the uh, battle continues. There's Houston once again, the number 11 machine working his way through. The number 23 of Brian Baker. Not much changes going on in our top 10 riders as they uh, are staying uh, for the most part the same guys. Little position jockeying back and forth throughout different sections of the race course, but uh, for the most part holding fairly steady through the entire top 10. 
There's the number 66 of Adam McGill once again, and he uses that inside line to his advantage. I guess momentum is uh, what you got to have in order to take that inside line. If you don't have the momentum on your side, you best back off. There's Johnny Gallagher, the number 18 machine. Thought we saw him just a few moments ago, but uh, he's riding the orange ATV here in the 05 season. Back uh, just a little further now, more riders uh, attacking Chaos Canyon. And uh, again, as the race is wearing on, it looks like maybe these guys are starting to figure out what is the smoothest line. And maybe some of those rocks that were sticking out a lap ago have been dug out and we're looking at a little smoother lines. I guess I spoke a little too soon as we look, as we were saying that, we look and we see that, uh, well, the momentum again is the key factor here. If you've got the momentum, you can make it look easy, but if momentum is not on your side, then there could be trouble ahead for you. As we can see already, a uh, bottleneck, if you will, starting to develop. That's a small one, but uh, enough of one that is uh, causing havoc for about six or eight riders at a time. And there is a perfect example of having momentum on your side being the key factor as momentum was not on his side and finds himself stuck on the side of uh, Chaos Canyon. Check back out front with our leaders, and we've got a lead change. Bill Balance has made the pass on Borch. Borch was leading up through Chaos Canyon and now falls back off to the number two spot. Borch still holding on to second in the woods, and he is still on the gas. Looks like a mistake may have been made by the number three machine, and not a lot of those have been made today. He has actually been capitalizing on Balance's mistakes, but uh, this time Balance gets to capitalize on one of his mistakes in lap number four. Wow, we are seeing some great racing action here at round number one, the season opener, the Lone Star GNCC. There's Balance continuing his lead and trying to dominate as much as possible, but Borch is not going to allow that to happen. This section a lap ago, Borch was actually leading through this section of the race course with Balance in second, and actually it looked to me like Borch may have a, a little bit more of a lead through that field section than what Balance did, so obviously something somewhere went wrong for the number three machine. Back out on the race course into the heart of, uh, I guess, the Barnwell Mountain Recreational Area, and and uh, we are definitely down into the low-lying areas as we are seeing some uh, mud sections. And this uh, is that mud section I think we saw at the beginning of the race has wallowed out to uh, quite a good size hole there. And uh, though it's not that challenging, if you choose the wrong line or maybe get cross rutted in there, don't keep the speed up, you could probably find yourself in some trouble in that section of the race course as well. And, Again, I don't believe that the uh, camera is doing it much justice as Yokely checks in through the uh, mud hole now, and he is definitely at a major deficit. Got uh, several seconds to make up on our lead riders, Balance and Borch. There's uh, Santo DeRisi back up into the number four spot aboard the number 16. He and Jinx appear to be battling back and forth for that number four spot, and it looks like DeRisi is trying his hardest to close in on uh, Yokely, there's uh, the number seven of Jinx we were talking about a moment ago. He's lost about what looks to be about 10 seconds. Now on the fourth place rider, number 16, Santo DeRisi. More of our top riders checking in through the uh, mud hole section. Wonder if uh, Smiley is able to work his way up through the field. Well, we're not going to find out whether Smiley's making it just yet or not as uh, we're going to be heading to another mud hole section on the race course and as you can see a big hole starting to develop there in the beginning of that and uh, slowing our riders down a little bit not stopping them but uh, some of our riders actually elected to swing out wide and that's probably why right there a hot motor cold water uh, a lot of steam and uh, well it could be a, a benefactor it could be a downfall actually if you get the mud packed in your motor or if you get stuck like this rider right here has one rider uh, finds the long way around, which appears to obviously be the fast line now. Back out front, check this out. Borch has made the pass again, and he is your leader now here on lap number four. Balance has dropped off to second. We're in lap traffic now, and Balance has lost the uh, groove, if you will, that he had the first two laps of racing. So it's Seesaw battling back and forth here on lap number four between Borch and Balance. And at the end of lap number four now, here comes Borch around to uh, continue to lead heading into the white flag lap now.
Borch followed uh, right on his heels, though, by the number one of Bill Balance. Balance is not far behind that number three machine at all. Just keep an eye out as we'll see things uh, tightening, tightening up once again for those guys. Looks like things are tightening up there with Yokely as he's closed the gap a little bit here at the end of lap number four, heading into lap number five, the fifth and final lap of the day. Matt Smiley also working his way up through now. And there's Santo Derisi, the number 16. Looks like he may have lost a position or two. As we check the leaderboard now, it is uh, Borch out front, Balance, Yokely, Derisi, and Jinx, one through five. Picking things back up here on lap number five, our fifth and final lap. Borch leading through the pits now as Balance holding on to the number two spot in a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle now as they make their way out of the pro pit section and back into Chaos Canyon. Is this going to change the face of this race? Is there wheel-to-wheel? -wheel? Actually, if Borch would get stuck at this point, it would be a disadvantage for the number one of Bill Balance because it would uh, actually cause Balance to bump into the rear of Borich, slowing Balance's momentum down at that point and uh, actually reestablishing momentum for Borich. So uh, that may have not been the wisest of choices for Bill Balance up through that section of Chaos Canyon. But uh, when you're in the hunt for the lead, it's hard to tell yourself back off or choose a different line when you know what the fastest lines happen to be out there. Back uh, in our pack just a little bit more. And uh, again, uh, four laps of uh, racing on the Chaos Canyon is really starting to take its toll here uh, for our riders. And uh, it looks like, again, I, I believe the physical fitness of some of our riders are starting to take its toll on themselves as the long winter break is uh, starting to catch up on these riders. Some of those riders might have been pretty strong heading through the first three laps, but as lap four and five wear on, Obviously, they're starting to feel it quite a bit. Yokely still in the number three spot as he masters once again Chaos Canyon back out in the wooded section, and it's still Borch followed by Balance, one and two, and that looks like lap traffic in between those guys at that point. And uh, back out uh, in the, the speed section of the race course, you can see that uh, Balance is hungry, hungry, hungry. He is trying his best to pass in any place possible out here in this last lap of racing. This is not the place that Bill Balance wants to be with uh, less than 11 miles to go now in the number two spot. He wants to open up this uh, 05 season with a win. It's going to be tough to do with Chris Borch at the helm at this point. There you see him checking in again. Borch and Balance still out front. And uh, again, another section of the race course and this waterhole section as uh, we near the end of this final lap, it looks like now. Borch continues to hold on to the number one spot. You can see that he has been on the rear wheel of Chris Borch for some time now as Balance's machine is starting to uh, show a lot of mud on the front of uh, his uh, number plates and that means that he has been following instead of leading earlier in the race we could see the number one prevailing quite a bit the number three had gotten hidden but this time around it is now balance also numbers being hidden by the mud that has been thrown back from chris porch and uh, and speaking of mud throwing back it looks like uh, we're throwing right back to the end of this race and uh, chris porch in the closing few turns Ladies and gentlemen, is going to win the opener for Lone Star GNCC. Going to go to Chris Bortz, second place. Going to go to the number one of Bill Balance. And what an amazing upset to open up the 2005 season. Balance will take the number two spot and holding on for third will be the number two of William Yokely. What a battle. Five laps of intensity here at the Barnwell Mountain Recreation Area and the Lone Star GNCC. And check this out. It looks like Matt Smiley, Mighty Matt, has battled back from a dead last place start to fifth place. Once again, Mr. And what a way to open up the 2005 Suzuki Grand National Cross Country Championship Series with an all-out war right down to the finish. Come on. Uh, it was an awesome track out there today. That, uh, Racer Productions put on a heck of a uh, tra track. It was a gnarly track. It was, it was a lot of fun, a lot of rocks, very challenging, physically challenging and men mentally challenging. Uh, it was a lot of fun, some high speed places, some tight places, but my uh, Yoshimura Power Suzuki worked awesome today with my Elka shocks and rolled design suspension components that really soaked things up and 
I'm very happy to win. This is a, a good way to start the season in third place. It ain't a win, but uh, it's still good points. I'm looking forward to the 2005 series. Talk a little bit about it. Well, it was a really good race. Uh, wound up, Yamaha pulled me off a start and uh, got the whole shot and uh, took off from there. Battle with William there first lap or two, but then I pulled away a little bit and uh, I think Chris came out fourth and he worked his way through the pack. We got hooked up there towards the middle of the second lap and from the time we got hooked up to the, to the last turn, it was pretty much a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle, just uh, all the way around the courses, rubbing, making passes back and forth and uh, you know, it's what racing's all about. First and foremost, I want to thank the Lord and uh, Team Yamaha, GYTR, Axis Shocks, uh, Maxis Tires, Tire Balls, Moose Racing. Uh, Alpine Stars, uh, Scott Goggles, uh, DP Brakes, Douglas Wheel, uh, uh, GT Thunder, uh, Excalibur Racing Axles from Lone Star, and uh, IMS. Yeah, I mean, I got a decent start. I just wanted to hang in there and uh, just, just looking for good lines, just following them. And uh, I finally got around and moved into second there and was uh, just rolling with balance and we just started, we trucked away from the rest of the pack and it was just basically a battle between me and him. Just trying to ride smooth, I knew he was there the whole race and he knew I was there when he was ahead of me so it was just, I don't know, it was just a fun race all around. For GNCC Racing, I'm Rob Tomlin. Have a great day everybody.